Okay guys, um, this one I'm recording from home, so sorry if it's kind of messy. Anyway, um, determining the heat of vaporization is really easy. Um, all we're doing, um, whether we're determining the heat of vaporization, we're determining a pressure, or we're determining a temperature, we're actually going to use the same equation all three times. And that is the uh, classius clay Perion equation. I just call it the CC equation. Um, if I reference the CC equation, this is what I'm talking about. It's uh, the simple form is the uh, natural log of the vapor pressure equals the negative enthalpy of vaporization over R, which is a constant that you guys um, will be given times 1 over the temperature plus the natural log of beta which is like this is a y equals mx plus b equation and this is actually just the equivalent of b and this is m which is the slope so there's a couple ways we could do this um, with the kind of problem you guys have been given on mastering chemistry um, you're given some funky graph like this and I will explain why everything is kind of color coded here in a minute um, okay, so, noting a couple of things about how we're going to use the classius clay Perion equation, um, our delta H of vaporization is always going to be given in either joules or kilojoules per mole, or per gram, if they're being really messed up, or, and the R will either always be given like 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, or it'll be 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Okay? So then, um, our temperatures all have to be in Kelvin because of the units for R at the base here. Okay? So, when you're given a chart like this, it doesn't matter which two numbers you pick. I could say that I pick this one, this pressure, and this accompanying temperature, or this temperature and pressure. The thing is though that you have to get a pair. So it doesn't matter if you pick this pair or this pair or this pair and so forth. So if I want to use Clasius Clyperion's equation or CC, um, my the things that matter are that I plug this in correctly. If I want this in kilojoules, I'd use the 8.31 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And then I have to make sure that the T2 that I pick and the P2 that I pick are in the right place. So I highlighted them in pink here. These are not your same numbers. I'm not doing your homework for you. But um, the yellow one, the P1 and the T1 that you guys would pick, you could pick any dang number from in here. And you plug that in and you would choose that and highlight it in yellow if you need to sort it out. You don't have to graph this. You could graph it, but um, it's easier to just show you how to work this out mathematically. You're not going to have Excel on your test. So that's that. Okay, so all you do after you plug all of these in, because we'll know P2, and we'll know T2, and we'll know T1, and we'll know P1, the only thing we don't know if we're trying to solve for the heat of vaporization is we don't know this enthalpy of vaporization. So you plug everything in and you solve for the enthalpy of vaporization just using algebra. Okay, then um, by determining the normal boiling point, what we're doing is the normal boiling point is always at one atmosphere. But the cool thing about one atmosphere is one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury, which equals 760 tor. Okay, so if this chart is given to you in tor versus Kelvin, or Kelvin versus atmospheres, or Kelvin versus millimeters of mercury, you can use it for any of those and just worry about converting the uh, pressure to the unit you want later. But both pressures have to be in the same thing. So P2 has to be in TOR if P1 is in TOR and P2 
P2 can be in millimeters of mercury as long as T P1 is in millimeters of mercury and so forth. So you guys can just determine that yourselves based off what it asks for. So if we're going to use the CC equation, you guys will know this um, enthalpy of vaporization because you guys will have already solved for it in the last equation if you're doing the mastering chemistry version. Um, so you'll plug that in here. You'll plug in R. And I use the kilojoules one. And then I use the same pink numbers that I chose before. The 90 Kelvin that I made up on the 145.4 Tor that I made up for P2. So those match from the chart. Okay. See? And then my P1, because we know that the normal boiling point is always at 760 Tor or 760 millimeters of mercury or one atmosphere, we know for certain that this is 760 Tor if we're using Tor here. So we plug that in. And the, um, since we know these, we know these, we know these, and we know these, I, uh, we don't know this. What we're solving for in this case, because I chose it as T1 for my atmospheric pressure, I chose P1. So we're solving for T1, and you'll do that using algebra. That should get you guys good to go. This will work for any pressure and temperature problem. With the Clasius um, clay period equation, we're always going to know some of the variables. We have one, two, three, four, five things that could potentially be unknown. You will always know four of those things, and you'll just solve from there.